The third story we're going to share in April is The Magic Pomegranate. It's a Jewish folktale, and this one is retold by Penina Shram from Jewish stories one generation tells another. The beautiful thing about folktales is that, in fact, they are passed from one generation to another. They have a lot of cultural resonance to them and importance, and they also tend to be uh, teaching stories. So once there were three brothers who loved an adventure. One day they decided to go on a journey, each one to a different country, and to meet again on a certain day 10 years later. Each brother was to bring back with him an unusual gift. So the oldest brother decided to go to the east, and when he arrived in a certain Eastern town, he was fascinated by what he saw there. Magicians and dancers and jugglers and acrobats were everywhere. And as the brother was watching the entertainments, he saw one magician holding up a magic looking glass through which he could see to the distant corners of the kingdom. <sighs> Thought the oldest brother, I would like to have that glass for that would certainly be an unusual object to share with my brothers. He asked the magician, Tell me, how much is that glass? I shall buy it from you. Now, at first, the magician was not going to part with his magic glass, but after much pleading by the older brother and some bargaining, they agreed upon a price and the magician sold the glass to the brother. The second brother traveled to a country in the West and wherever he went, he kept his eyes open and his mind as well. He was always on the lookout for the most unusual gift he could bring back to his brothers. And one day he was attracted by the cries of an old carpet seller who called out carpets for sale, beautiful, wonderful carpets here. And the brother approached the carpet seller and he began to examine his carpets when suddenly he saw the carpet at the bottom of his pile begin to move. It seemed to be moving by itself. What kind of carpet is that one? He asked pointing to the bottom one which was quite visible by then. The old merchant motioned for him to bend down and whispered in his ear, this is a magic carpet, buy it, and it will take you anywhere you want to go, and quickly too. The second brother and the carpet seller finally settled upon a price, and the brother took the magic carpet with him, satisfied he had the most unusual gift. The youngest brother went south, and when he arrived in a certain country, he traveled far and wide to see what he could find to bring back to his brothers, now this was a country that was noted for its many forests of trees. And one day the youngest brother was walking in a grove of trees when he noticed something strange. A tree that was a different shape from the hundreds of other trees around it. And it was covered with orange red blossoms and it was so beautiful. And as the younger brother came closer, he saw that there was only one red pomegranate on the tree. This is strange indeed, thought the young man. A pomegranate tree with only one pomegranate? He approached the tree slowly, laughing to himself and thinking of the story he'd tell his brothers about the pomegranate tree full of blossoms, but only one fruit. As he reached for the pomegranate, it fell into his hands before he could pluck it from the branch. And as soon as that happened, another pomegranate burst forth from one of the blossoms. When the brother saw this, he looked at the pomegranate in his hands and said to himself, this has to be a magic pomegranate tree. It was the only pomegranate on the tree. And yet as soon as it fell into my hands, when I was about to reach for it, a new pomegranate appeared suddenly. It has to be magic. But what kind of magic does it perform, I wonder? So the youngest brother examined the pomegranate, marveling at its beauty. Shape, the shape is so perfect, he thought, crowned with the crown of King Solomon. And he walked away from the tree looking at his mysterious new treasure. When he looked back to see the pomegranate tree once more, it was no longer there, it had disappeared. Now I know this is a magic pomegranate. And so this is what I will bring to my brothers. 10 years passed. And when the three brothers met as they had planned, they embraced each other with delight. They eagerly showed each other the unusual objects they had brought back from their journeys. And the oldest brother said, let me look through my glass and see what I can see. And when he held up the glass, he saw in a far off kingdom, a princess lying ill in bed near death. Oh, quickly, dear brothers, get on the magic carpet and we'll fly there, said the second brother. And what seemed like seconds, the three brothers arrived in the far off kingdom. Now in the royal palace of this kingdom, the king whose daughter lay ill was grief stricken. 
He had sent for every doctor in the country to cure the princess, but they had all failed and there was no hope left for the princess. Finally, the king had sent a messenger throughout the country saying, all right, whoever can save my daughter, the princess will marry her and have half the kingdom. As if in a dream, the youngest brother heard a voice whispering inside him, the pomegranate. The youngest brother approached the king and asked, may I try to cure the princess? The king agreed and led the young man to the princess's chamber. When the young man saw her, he approached quietly and sat by her side. And then he took the pomegranate from his pocket. He cut it open with gentle care. He carefully cut each kernel from its place and then he fed the juicy red kernels to the princess. And in a few moments, she felt stronger and color returned to her cheeks. And soon she sat up in bed, fully restored to health. The king was overjoyed. He hugged his daughter and announced, the man who saved my daughter will marry her. And the three brothers immediately began to fight, each one claiming to be the one who had saved the princess. The oldest brother said, if not for my magic glass, we would never have known the princess was ill in the first place. I deserve to marry the princess. But brothers, brothers, it was the magic carpet that could have helped us arrive so quickly, argued the second brother. Otherwise, she would have died. I deserve to marry the princess. And then the youngest brother said, well, it was my magic pomegranate that actually healed the princess. I deserve to marry the princess. The king tried to decide, but could not. He turned to the princess and asked, who do you think deserves to marry you? The princess answered, I will ask each of them a question. She turned to the oldest brother and asked, has your magic glass changed in any way since you arrived in the kingdom? No, said the oldest brother. My glass is the same as always, and I can look through it and see to every corner of this kingdom. She asked the second brother, has your magic carpet changed in any way since you arrived in this kingdom? And the second brother announced, no, my carpet is the same, and I can fly anywhere on it as always. Turning to the youngest brother, the princess asked, has your magic pomegranate changed in any way since you arrived in this kingdom? And the youngest brother answered, yes, princess. My pomegranate is gone because I gave it to you to eat. The princess turned to the three young men and said, I will marry the youngest brother because he performed the greatest good deed. He gave up something of his own. The brothers and the king all understood the princess's wisdom. And so a wedding was planned and held and the princess and the three brothers all became royal advisors. Thanks for joining me for this retelling of a traditional Jewish folktale called The Magic Pomegranate, as related by Panan Ashram in Jewish Stories, One Generation Tells Another. Thanks for joining me too for any of the Charlotte Hobbs Memorial Library story times. I hope to see you in May. <laughs>